Lord is awesome. Everything I want to know, I ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to me. Me as a preacher, I cannot afford just to believe things. I mean, they need to line up with God's word and the Holy Spirit need to reveal it to me. Hallelujah. So about the manager, you need to be a good manager with your finances. This is the thing that I never wanted to preach about. Because I know how preachers have abused the issue of money. I didn't even want to preach about tithes. But the Lord started to correct me concerning this, commanding me to do so because he knows it takes finances to take this gospel to the end of the earth. You can do nothing without finances. So the Bible says money is the answer for everything. I thought, how can money be the answer for everything? The Bible says that in Proverbs. First of all, money is the biggest test for every human heart. There is not a bigger test for the human heart to see if it's upright or not than finances. Money is the strongest power, earthly power there is. The one who can be trusted with the strong earthly power can be trusted with true spiritual riches. Jesus said, if you are not faithful with financial matters, which is not true riches, how can you entrust to you true riches if you sit here this morning and you, got, you are critical concerning the, what I say about finances, consider this. Say to the to consider this. The blind cannot lead the blind. It's if you are blind, how can you instruct me? It's amazing that the people criticize is the ones who are not successful in their finances. You can only speak about finances if you are yourself successful in finances. If you're unsuccessful as a Christian concerning your finances, that means that you have obeyed God's rules concerning finances. If you are not successful concerning finances, now for, for the now, you keep quiet. you got nothing to say. The one who's got the right to say is the one who's got the fruit and the proof. If I'm successful concerning finances in my faith life, remember, I'm not a businessman. And every time I want to do business in the past, God stopped me and said, I call you into ministry, not businessman. I've tried many times, and I was successful in what I did, but God stopped me every time. He said, I will raise businessmen around you. Amen. But I'm successful in my faith life concerning finances. I've given not one tithe, and now I'm not boasting. I'm your example. I give the honor to Jesus. I don't give one tithe, I don't give two, I don't give three, I don't give four, I give five tithes. I've got the right to speak. I mean... So if I go to the Lord concerning finances, I ask him concerning financial matters, he revealed to me what is his truth. Remember the shrewd manager in the Bible which Jesus spoke about? Make for yourself friends in eternal places with money. You should use your money to win souls. You should be a wise manager. Do not store for yourself up riches on this earth. Where thieves break in and steal, and moth and rust destroy. But make for yourself friends in eternal dwellings by using your money to win souls for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I say that so boldly because I know where I came from. I refused in the past to speak about money. Money was never included in my sermons. And the Lord instructed me and said, you shall speak about money. So I do it so boldly. I know who gave, gave me the, the right, not the right, he gave me instruction to speak about it. Where your heart is, there your treasure is. If, money is. if you love money and you cannot let your money go to win souls, that means that you're a lover of money. 
So many people quote this. They say, oh, money is the root of all problems. Say, Trugani, so don't be a liar. The Bible does not say money is the root of all problems. The Bible says the love of money. Money is a good thing. You can buy with money. You can bless people. You can buy your wife roses. I mean, you can put petrol in your car. You can buy a nice car. You can put tires on the car. You cannot do them without money. You can bless the poor. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You can give someone who do not have food in his house. You give him, you can give him meat. You can give him pup. You can give him a nice meal. You can buy their children some things to play with. Money is a very good thing. It is a blessing given to us by God to bless those around us, to bless our own children. To put them in school so they might be qualified. What will you do without money? To win souls for Jesus. I mean, to send people to Malawi, Mozambique, to preach the gospel there, to spread the gospel. Set your gun to money is a good thing, man. But never, never work for money. Let money work for you. I mean, when will money work for you? The best place to invest your money is in the kingdom of heaven. You cannot get a better place. Salvation is found in no one else. Satan is to no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Say by which we must be saved. No other name be given. Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Satan is to, he is the only life. He is the only way to God the Father. He is the only truth there is. There's no other truth but the name of Jesus. Say no other truth but the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Today I want to say to you early this morning, I asked the Lord, what should I tell the people today from heaven? He said to me, tell my people, I've given them the name of my son Jesus Christ. I've given them Jesus as the most precious possession you can have in eternity. It is in the name of Jesus that you are saved. It is in the name of Jesus you believe. It is through the name of Jesus that you are blessed. Say, it is in his name that I'm saved. It is through his name that you are blessed. It is by his name that you are kept safe. Give him an awesome hand. There's no other name being given. I mean... But the name of Jesus Christ, it is in his name that you are saved. It is by his name that you are kept saved. It is through his name that you are blessed. Every blessing you've got comes from Jesus. And you must be ready to give this blessing, whether it's spiritual blessing or just the happiness and the joy that you are saved to people, you should be ready as a good soldier of Christ to, to give an account of what you believe. In season or out of season. I mean, thank you, Lord Jesus. Say to God next to you, you should be ready in season or out of season to give an account of what you believe anytime in the name of Jesus. No, don't do it if you're unsuccessful. You get Christians, they witness, but they themselves, they are fraudsters. They cheat us, they owe people money, then they say, no, rather keep quiet in Jesus' name. If you are not a witness, keep your mouth till you are a witness. Give him a hand. Please, man. Don't blaspheme his name with your life that is not a witness and a testimony, please. I mean, say to God, if you want to speak, you earn the right to speak first. I said that about finances. Shut your mouth concerning finances if you do not have the right to speak. I mean, Please, you should be a testimony for Jesus. That's why I preach to you and I pray for you for anointing so that you might be blessed. Now, I don't speak about finances. I speak about your life. You get Christians. They, they don't make it financial. Then you look at them and say, yeah, they always, what's going on with these people? They don't work. They do not have work. They fraudsters. You can never trust them. They say, oh, let me tell you about Jesus. You know what you want to say to them? Shh. Shh. 
shut up. Earn the right to speak first, man. No one will ever be successful in ministry if he was not successful in secular world. Give God a hand. Never ever. God tests and weighs his people. Some people say, oh, pastor, I was not successful in that. I was not successful. So I think the Lord has called me to ministry. Let me give you something very clear. If you haven't been successful in the secular world, God will never, God, I don't care what gift you got, He will never release you into ministry of any kind. Even if you got gift, even if you're anointed. Because the people in His kingdom must have the right to speak. What about Peter? He was a successful fisherman. Give God a hand. A successful businessman. Him and the other apostles were fishermen. Successful fishermen making a living, looking after their wives. And God called them. Give God a hand. Some people, you think they must not tell anyone about Jesus because the people, they're going to shame his name, please. If they, if they see, they speak about Jesus, I walk away. I don't want to be connected to them. If you want to witness for Jesus, live an upright life, a transparent, upright life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make sure the areas where you want to be a witness that you are successful yourself. In Jesus' name. Now pray for grace. Pray, Lord Jesus. I pray for grace now. That my life will be a testimony in everything in the name of Jesus. So the Bible says we will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon us, and then we will be witnesses. What kind of power? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. What kind of power? It is not the Holy Spirit's power. It is the power of the blood of Jesus. The power of what He has done for us can only come to reality by the revelation of Holy Spirit. That's why you can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Who will reveal the power of Jesus to you? Ask the guy next to you. Who will reveal to you the power of Jesus? Say the Holy Spirit. Therefore the Bible says you will receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you and then you will be my witnesses. The Holy Spirit is the only one that can make the blood of Jesus a reality and cleanse you from your sin. Please, don't, don't blame people if they do not listen to you and you're a sinner. The man of God should watch even his speech. You use foul language and you expect the people to listen to you? They look at you, they think, who are you? Huh? Or you witness to them, but you, 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 you cheat people in, in their finances. You know, stories spread very quickly. Oh, he owes such and such money. He speaks about Jesus all the time, but he does not, do not pay people their debt. Uh, they say, oh, look at Christian. Uh. The Bible says the man of God should be blameless. Say blameless. Blameless. They should not be able to point even one finger to you. Even your language. This is not this man speaking. This is Holy Spirit speaking to you directly from heaven now. This is not this man, the man that you see now. Now it's Holy Spirit. If you want to be a testament, a man that gives testimony, the man of God should be blameless. The one who gives testimony should be a blameless man. I mean, that's why when I come into this building to preach, I am blameless without sin. Before I come into this meeting, I make very sure I'm clean. Before I present the gospel through these lips, I make 100% sure that you will not receive anything else but the pure grace 
and gospel of Jesus Christ.